Hey guys, sziasztok! And welcome to another video of Pathophysiology with Mac. Uh, today our topic is going to be, as you see in the title, it's going to be about um, white blood cells, leukemias, lymphomas, and all of these things. Uh, when I was uh, checking the, the slides, the lecture notes, I saw that it was really too long, so probably it's gonna be on two videos the same. The first one's gonna be just an introduction. And this was requested by many, 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 many friends. I mean, really many. <laughs> so uh, I hope I can upload it and finish both of these parts before some of your exam, some of people's exams. And yeah, okay, that's it. I'm doing this with my pain, so gotta appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so let's get to it. Our topic today is white blood cells, WBC. I hope you can see that well. So first of all, let's take just some basics. Uh, we know that the normal range for white blood cells ranges from 4.5 to 11 times 10 to the power of 9 per liter. All right, so this is the number. This is just like a cliche that comes for all cells. So 4.5 to 11. Before that, leukopenia. After that, leukocytosis. So when you see when you say white blood cells, then we have to differentiate or to think about how do they originate and where do they start their journey. So the journey starts with, as we know, normally you know a stem cell, stem cells in the bone marrow. Okay, so stem cells will give two types of progenitor cells, okay? One of which is, sorry, getting green, is a common, both of them are common, okay? So you have a common lymphoid progenitor cell and a common myeloid. Now the lymphoids are, as we know, lymphocytes. And when you say lymphocytes, you can simply start uh, naming some lymphocytes. You, we know we have B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and we have the NK lymphocytes. And there's the NKT and so forth, so on. So this is just from immunology. Now the myeloid have, well, first of all, they go into three uh, Three types of not a pluri, not a multipotent, but pluripotent cells, and these are the myeloblasts, myeloblasts, and you have the erythroblasts. So all of them are still a blast. Erythroblasts. And the megakaryocytes, the megakaryocytes. Okay, now we know the megs, the megakaryos, these ones will give us the platelets. The erythroblasts give us erythrocytes, so red blood cells, RBCs. But before that, there's one step, which is a reticulocyte. So reticulocytes are the partially mature that come just before red blood cells. So reticulocytes, and the difference between those is as we know, red blood cells don't have any nuclei and they don't have any granules. But this one also doesn't have a nuclei, but it has some granules and has some enzymes in it, okay? That's the difference. Now the myeloblasts are what we care about because these will give some of the, the rest of the white blood cells that we know. What are these? So, yeah. What are those? 
we know you have the, for example, the neutrophils, neutros, basophils, uh, eosinophil, eosinophils, and what else? The monocytes, the monos. Okay, these come from the myeloblast. All right. Uh, this is just a, like a short thing. Now for these ones, for the common lymphoids, we said that, okay, all of these are where? Stem cells, where? Bone marrow. So the journey starts in the bone marrow. My drawing is really crappy, but bear with me. So you have the bone marrow. And it produces these. Now I'm talking about this saga. Now for these, they start in the bone marrow. Then, bone marrow spits it out to the blood. So vessels. Then from the vessels, where do they go? Now these, the lymphos need to mature. Okay, so some of them, like the B cells, for example, they will go to the lymph nodes. So I'm just going to make it like this. This is a lymph node. This is supposed to be the mantle uh, zone. And this is the germinal center or whatever. Okay, so lymph nodes, L and lymph nodes. Or, for example, T cells, where do they mature? In the thymus. I don't know how to draw it. I'm just going to make like this. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that's the thymus or thymus or wherever they mature. So it can go anywhere in the reticuloendothelial system. Okay. And after that, where do they go? Hey, back to the blood. And some of them really like some some small can go back to the bone marrow for example the memory B memory cells okay and they can stay there some not all okay and they keep circulating because when we say blood this is a really wide region this is a big region it's it stays circulating in the blood it's not one part like here or here where it stays in it so anyways this is a very uh, short uh, story about it. Now, whenever you hear the word leukemia, okay, leukemia, it means that the problem is in the bone marrow because it's a problem with the stem cells, okay? It's always like this. Leukemia means bone marrow, okay? So let me write that down in black, okay? So whenever you hear this word, Leukemia, it means that the problem is here, okay? Leukemia is here. Now what happens, so it can be for example that the, uh, the progenitor cells for this, the common lymphoid for example, lymphoblasts, okay? Uh, overgrow too much in the bone marrow, okay? So what happens, or for example, the myeloblasts overgrow in here. So acute myeloblastic leukemia or myeloid leukemia. Now when this happens, one thing is that they overgrow in the bone marrow. So there's too much production of them and they will start to overspill. So think of overspill. Another thing is that these blasts will kind of repress or suppress the other normal cells okay so you'll have a deficiency of the other types for example if you have too much myeloblasts then you'll have less erythroblasts and less megakaryocytes okay or for example if you have too much of these then these will decrease okay so they usually these cells uh, use up all the uh, the enzymes or or they take the most not say well they're really toxic so someone like in a toxic relationship they can they just want the attention so they take all the attention and they don't allow the others to mature uh, so they uh, suppress them and 
replace them. Okay? Then when these are suppressed, where do they, uh, where do they uh, produce? Where are they, where do they get produced? So then you will have also extra medullary, extra medullary hematopoiesis or poesis. Hematopoiesis, okay? So then starts, uh, for example, red blood cells or others start uh, making up in the uh, spleen, in the liver, wherever, okay? And this is extramedullary hematopoiesis. So you can expect this. And when they do happen in these areas, then you'll have the splenomegaly, the hepatomegaly, and so forth. So this is, in, in very, very short, what is leukemia about? Let's talk about lymphoma. Okay. Now here, in this uh, step, what happens here is maturation, right? So in all of these, okay, now let me, okay, we stopped about this. This is leukemia. Now here what happens is, as we said, maturation. Now in this maturation step or phase, you will have the lymphomas, and this is the big difference between them. Now a lymphoma, these ones, uh, the cells in here, and this is, by the way, lymphomas are uh, specific only to common lymphoid because they happen here. So only for lymphocytes. So you cannot hear lymphoma and say, oh, there's too much neutrophils. Nope. Cannot happen. So in lymphomas, these cells will be overproduced or something wrong will go here at this level. And then they will overflow and they will over spill to the blood again, okay? And they might, because some of them can go back, they will invade the bone marrow, okay? So the difference between this and these is that this step is has more maturation in it. So when you check the uh, cells in the, with the, like, if you just take a sample, uh, you'll see that the cells are more mature than in leukemia. Well, here, while here you have, if it's acute, it's blasts. If it's chronic, it is partially mature, or you can say immature. Okay, we will we'll talk about this in in a bit. So here is lymphoma. Okay, whenever you have this black star here, this represents a lymphoma, or even where we said they can. Uh, In the liver. Okay, I hope this is a liver or something that looks like a liver. All right, so this is it. Let's just talk about a little bit of, uh, about some basics that we, we might use. So you can classify these diseases according to where they happen. So if you ask the question where, or sorry, where is the problem in, in which uh, step or which phase? Then you can classify it into acute and chronic. So in lymphoma, you will not have acute lymphoma and chronic lymphoma. We're talking about leukemia here. How do you uh, classify leukemia? So if where, we're, okay. Leukemias. So if it's acute, it means that the problem is absolutely with the blast. So you cannot say acute and then uh, mm, myelocytic. No, it's acute myeloblastic, for example. Or you cannot say acute lymphocytic. No, it's acute lymphoblastic. And this will make a big difference for you to understand it and to know what to expect, how you will see the blood slide. And the chronic is the cytic, okay? It means it is immature or it's partially mature. Not partially or partially abnormally mature, okay? In the chronic one. So you can, this is according, if you ask the question, 
where. Now you can classify it or you can uh, talk about leukemias in a different sense. How? How did this problem happen? For example, how did the myeloblasts, as they become, let's say, neutrophils, what happened on them that made this problem? So here you can talk about the, uh, the, the pathophysiology of it or the reasons. And these are really, really too much, and they don't always make sense because they have a disease. Let's say they have the promyelocytic leukemia, and then they check what's the problem in it. They check the genetics, they check the enzymes, they check everything, blah, blah, blah. And then they discover, oh, then we figured that in a promyelocytic, you might have like this gene mutation. Okay, so they don't really make sense. It's more, the, it's more like this disease, and then they discovered that this was the reason for it, okay? Now, some of them do make sense. For example, if we say there's a tyrosine kinase uh, mutation, and this one is responsible for cell differentiation, then in a, with a mutation in it, it will stop the maturation or it will stop the differentiation, so you end up with accumulation of the steps before, meaning the blast, for example, okay? So when you ask how, the reasons can be many, many. This is really not so much understanding more than, uh, more than like you just count it or you just memorize it, but I'll help you with some. So you might have a translocation, okay? A translocation in between two chromosomes and the most common ones you'll see are, for example, a translocation between T8 and something, for example, 814 or Philadelphia, T922. These are the most, most, most important. Okay? A translocation in these. How do we know which one's for which or what is what? When you see this 8, right? 8. Does it look like this? So it's a B. So this translocation is usually for Birkett. Okay? Not Birkett. Birkett. Let's leave Berkett alone. Uh, and this one, 90%, 90%, you will see it in chronic myelocytic, of course, we don't say myeloblastic, myelocytic leukemia. Or in some types of ALL, you will see in the acute lymphoblastic leukemia, you will see also this translocation in, I think, 80% or 70% something. So you might see it and it means a very bad prognosis for those who have it. But here it's mostly for CML and for ALL, okay? Whether ALL is in children or in adults. So this is what you need to know. Philadelphia chromosome T922. We'll talk about it when we say the disease itself. Or for example, if it's not a translocation between a chromosome and a chromosome, like this part of it goes with this part of the other one. So if it's not a translocation, it could be just a point mutation, meaning it involves only one, uh, one area or one place of the chromosome. Or for example, we can have oncoproteins. The formation of a protein that causes onco, that causes a tumor. This is, for example, the tyrosine, tyrosine kinase, okay? Or for example, it could be a proto-oncogene, you can read about all of these in pathology and I really don't want to get into their details because they're more mem more of a memorization than of understanding <laughs> because it's just examples, examples, examples. So it could be a proto-oncogen. It could be a virus. As we know, HPV, papilloma virus, can cause uh, tumors or it could be by us. Oops. <laughs> it could be atrogenic. Or, for example, like irradiation, or if they give a, a therapy, chemotherapy or something, or it can be just also by any inflammation. So these are some of the reasons if you want to talk about how leukemias can happen. I just mentioned them so you would have an idea, or maybe remember the ones I mentioned. <laughs> they can help you, and then you can memorize some more on your own. All right. Now let's talk about the same things, but a little bit in more detail. So I'll try to draw the bone again. So here is the same bone, hopefully. <laughs> okay, now in this bone, 
we said we have the uh, the the myeloid cells and the lymphoid cells and all of them. Just one example. You'll see it in your lecture that you have an example about the B cells. Okay. Just because when we say here and we take the B cells, then the B cells can be a problem here and can be here. So we can differentiate a leukemia from a lymphoma. But if we talk about myeloblasts, then we only talk about here and then blood and then that's it. We don't have this journey for the myeloblasts. So that's why I'm just taking the example of a B cell. We could take the T cell, we could take the NK cell, we could take others, okay? But the ones that we have the drawing, so I do it for you and you can relate it to your lecture. So the B cells start by a cell that is called a pro B. So a pro B cell. This one becomes, okay here, this one becomes a pre, the one that is just before a B cell, a pre B cell, okay? Then after a B cell, these are by the way, just like, you know, the stages and steps of, of its development. Then you have an immature B, okay, it's immature B cell, okay? Or some textbooks call it naive. Now these two are, are common, uh, are, they have something in common, which is the TDT, okay? It's just an enzyme. That's how you can differentiate these from this and from the others. That's why TDT is there, but you can forget about it. it I'm not gonna mention it so much here. Okay, so you have these cells and this is how they develop. Now these naive cells, they go out from the, no, it's too big. Okay, these ones go out from the bone marrow and they leave to the blood, okay? Yeah, I'll just make it a weird looking bone. Now they will go out to the blood, as we said. Okay, here's a blood vessel. Then from the blood vessels, we said they go where? The lymph node. Now here in the lymph node, we can have what? There is this or yeah, like, okay, I'm just going to make it like, okay, you have this area and you have this area. This is the mantle zone in Arabic, المعطفية. and this is the germinal zone. I don't know why I just remember some, some Arabic terms from back in my study in Damascus. Okay, or germinal zone. Here is where uh, usually the T cells and here we know the B cells inside. Okay, if I'm wrong, correct me because I forgot some, some immunolo immunology. So this is the lymph node. Okay, and if you remember this lymph node, uh, this step for maturation of the B cells, okay, we're still talking that here, now you have the B cells, okay? So you have the naive, still naive B cells. This step, usually here in the lymph node, remember there's the class switching. So the B cell becomes a committed IgG or IgM or it can become a memory cell, okay? So you have the class switching and the monoclonal expansion. Monoclonal expansion. Okay, now in here, we said there's the lymphomas and that's why in here, the types of, here we talk about lymphoma. Okay, here, lymphoma is the disease that happens at this stage. Okay, I didn't write, I didn't put the thymus because B cells don't go there. So these kind, uh, now the, the types of lymphomas that can happen here are what? You can expect this one, right? A mantle cell lymphoma. So you know what is the difference between different types of lymphomas when you read them. Like, why do we have all of these types? So you have mantle lymphoma, for example, 
you can have a follicular lymphoma okay all of these are b cells uh, b cell lymphomas you can have Burkitt lymphoma you can have diffuse large b cell lymphoma dlbl okay and these all depend on which a step of the maturation the problem happens and then they start expanding i mean expanding not in size <laughs> expanding in uh, a pleurisy so many many cells are uh, are being overproduced and they are overproduced and by the way just one thing sometimes you have cases in which there are too many b cells in here okay and they overflow to the blood and then they overflow and invade the bone marrow so when you take a bone marrow biopsy you will see a lot of b cells and when you take a lymph node biopsy you'll see also a lot of b cells and this is where the step can get overlapping between some kinds of leukemias chronic leukemias because the chronic ones are the ones that are mature and between the types of lymphomas in which the lymphoma involves the same type of cell that can be found in the uh, bone marrow okay so that's why some types overlap for example sometimes you see it as sll or cll uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or sll small small cell or small uh, uh, small lymphoid uh, lymphoma i think or small cell lymphoma okay anyways the sll okay that's why they overlap because sometimes it initiates from here and then it invades or it starts from here the bone marrow and it invades as we said the lymph nodes because here you have overspill right overspill and invasion so it can invade the gums if with the leukemia it can invade the gums the testicles the the reticular endothelial system the res invasion of many okay invasion of res and that's why you cannot differentiate all the times but then you can of course then again you can check for the uh the genes if you suspect a certain one and then you can check for it or the enzymes or whatever yeah so you can see that here and here you still have the same naive cell for example okay now we said these two are blasts okay this one is a blast and this one is a blast and here it became a little bit mature then we know from this part that what happens here if a problem happens here then you'll end up with the disease acute leukemia okay of course because we're talking about b cells it's a lymphoblastic acute lymphoblastic leukemia okay and this is the difference between a lymphoma and a lymphoblastic leukemia it's where it starts and the types of cells involved well, if it happens here, it is a lympho, it's a lympho problem, right? Okay, it's a lympho, but now it's a cytic, so it's a lymphocytic, but it's still from the bone marrow, so that's a leukemia. And because it's a lymphocytic, then it's chronic. And not acute okay you see the, the the difference that's why this same cell if it if the problems happens on it here then we call it a lymphoma a small cell lymphoma okay the same cell that's why sll or cll they are interchangeable here you can have the cll slash in small sll while here this is the sll slash cll and in both cases we cannot really differentiate they they consider it one entity this is one of the difficult ones okay i explained it now you know let's talk a little bit about just in really really general the symptoms what do we expect uh, of symptoms in a lymphoma and what do we expect of symptoms here in a leukemia now in a lymphoma the problem is here right so this lymph node 
is being is is overproducing the B cells, for example, in in this case, the B cell, where whether it's a marginal or or a germinal or a fo follicular. So, you will see a lymphadenopathy, lymphadenopathy. Okay, the lymph nodes are are enlarged, and one important thing is that they are painless. This is really important because they're only overgrowing. There's no inflammation. While in, for example, infectious mononucleosis, there's an inflammation and the inflammation causes pain in the nodules. But here it's not, so it's painless. Also, you can have some, because there's too many B cells, if they produce uh, antibodies or something, you might have some night sweats or a fever, or I don't know, maybe weight loss, okay? By the way, these are common symptoms of cachexia, if you remember from pathology. So cachexia is common for all tumors, and lymphoma is a tumor, okay? That's why you see those. Now what happens after this? Let us continue just... Here, there is a process Okay, so the process happens in it, and then what do you get from here? We're talking about the B cells. So what kind of end products uh, for the B cells? You have the ones that have the receptors on top of it. What was it called? Yes, this is memory B cell, or you can have the type of cell that shoots out stuff. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and this is the plasma cell. Okay. Plasma cell. Now, if the problem happens over here, then you get the disease that's called multiple myeloma. Okay? When these undergo monoclonal expansion of one type, for example, these are the... so. Here, in multiple myeloma, you have instead of this, for example, this. You see how I made this part of the antibody different than the normal one that I drew here? These ones, okay? They are, so either you have uh, fragments of it or you have whole IgG, IgM, whatever is increased so much and these will cause the problems. Okay. Okay, since we're here, <laughs> let me just write it, write for you the symptoms that we can expect in multiple myeloma. And then we'll go back to the lymphoma. So, what do you expect? You have uh, these cells, by the way, these and even the, the memory cells, these can go back to bone marrow, okay? These will actually go back to bone marrow. So multiple myeloma will have some uh, implications on the bone marrow because they're cells and they will go back to the bone marrow as they circulate. Okay? All right, now, the first symptom of uh, multiple myeloma is that these will overgrow too much. These cells will expand in, in the colony of them, the colony of plasma cells too much, and they will do what? They will infiltrate. So they will infiltrate tissues, they will infiltrate bone marrow, and when they infiltrate bone marrow, or the bone, then you'll have pain, bone pain, okay? And if it happens, for example, in the uh, vertebral column, you will have the compression, okay? So you'll have signs of compression. And when you see it on an x-ray, this is the punched out lesion, okay? So the bones will what? will release their calcium, there's calcium release, and this, it, it means it's getting corroded, and that's why you see on an x-ray, especially of the skull, the uh, punched out lesion that's very well known, okay? That leads to the symptom punched out lesion, okay, on x-ray. What else? These are antigens, right? Igs. Meaning, if they expand only IgEs without IgMs, or only IgMs without IgEs, what do you have? A humoral response abnormality. So, humoral immune 
abnormality. This is another thing, okay? Meaning decreased IGs, so you can become more susceptible to infections. What else? Since you have some calcium release, which is a positive charge, it will bind to a negative charge in the blood, and that's albumin. To the albumin, that is negative. What does it cause? Low albumin. So you'll have hypoalbuminemia also. What else do you have? The bone marrow, as we said, here we talked about the bone itself, but the bone marrow will be suppressed. So with suppressed bone marrow, what can you expect? You can expect anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. So bone marrow su suppressed, meaning low RBCs, low YBCs, and low platelets. Okay? And the very, very, very last thing, that if these precipitate in a tissue, for example, the kidney, which is really important, you can end up also with uh, kidney failure or tubular dysfunctions. So for, okay, I'm gonna put it here. So kidney failure, which is called AKA uremia, and it's very, very end stage. And this, by the way, the uremia meaning a very, very low GFR. GFR is one of the parts of the nephron. GFR and then the tubule. So you can have low GFR or you can have the tubule being affected. So this or that, or, oh, not or and, plus you will see also the Benz-Jones protein or Benz-Jones, yeah, Benz-Jones protein in urine, okay? Okay, there we go. This is about the uh, multiple myeloma. Now talking about the symptoms of leukemia, we said they start from the bone marrow, right? So you will have a decreased bone marrow function generally. So you can expect the same as this and this and this. I'll write them in different words. You see these three low red blood cells, low white and low platelets. Now I'll just write in here the symptoms that you can see. Low white blood cells, meaning you can have infections, infects. Low red blood cells, then you have anemia which is a uh, normochromic, normocytic, because this type of low production is the normal one. Not the big cells, not the small cells. Low platelets, you can have a thromboembolic and hemorrhage. And hemorrhage, okay? Uh, Wait, 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 no, 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 sorry, no thromboembolic, I think, I think it's mostly hemorrhage. So you have gum bleeding, or you can have epistaxis from the nose, nosebleed seats. And today I went shopping, and talk's still cheap. I rock to the beat of my drum set, I've been in the top for a while, and I ain't jump yet. Yeah, okay, other than anemia, you can have dyspnea because of low red blood cells, so low oxygen delivery. You can have this and fatigue, just, you know, more symptoms to mention. So this is all due to low bone marrow function. Uh, the, the hemorrhage also can be petechia, petechia, or ecchymosis, also other names. Okay, petechia and ecchymosis. Another major thing is invasion, right? We said it overflows from the bone marrow and it invades other regions. So invasion. Now the invasion here will cause what? The, you will see lymph adenopathy. And this is where in some parts, if the cells are partially mature, you can, uh, you can mix up the lymphoma with the leukemia. So you have lymphadenopathy and splenohepatomegaly, or either this or this or both of them, and or hepatomegaly. Okay. Yeah, here. Uh, even if it's if it's involving the if the leukemia is in the pre or pro T cells, then you can have in the thymus, right? invasion, or you can have the testicularis, testicles, the Bosak nodes, okay? 
Uh, what else? Uh, you can have uh, gingival, etc. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? And of course, you will have the bone pain. Same thing. Uh, what's the therapy for these? Since these are very active and they are really uh, always differentiating and, and in, in a constant activity, then you can most probably uh, use a chemotherapy for it. Or for, okay, first of all, you can use a bone marrow transplant. Just get rid of the whole problem. Okay, bone marrow transplant can be uh, healing in some cases or immunomodulatory therapy immunomodulatory drugs okay because these can alter the enzyme the specific enzyme that is being affected okay so this was uh, the first uh, this was the first uh, introduction about it Okay, maybe, okay, it's already 41 minutes. Yikes. Uh, I'll make it in another video. I'll start talking about lymphoma next time, the types of Hodgkin lymphoma. So here is like just a preview. So you remember what we talked about. One of my friends told me, can you just make a, like one last thing, okay. So this is uh, it about the, Introduction. Next, we'll be talking about lymphoma. What is Hodgkin lymphoma? Lymphoma is a lymphoma. It starts in the lymph nodes, okay? I'll just tell you what is Hodgkin, what's non-Hodgkin. Most of the types that we mentioned are non-Hodgkin. So I'll be talking about this, the lymphoma. And hopefully it won't be too long. I'll start talking about the leukemias. Uh, but now since you've got these, trust me, even if you study on your own, you'll find it much more easier to understand which ones which and not mix, okay? I hope, I hope I can really like make these fast and upload it for you guys, okay? Uh, study well, teach it to your friends, or if you have people in other universities, then you can send them the video, okay? By the way, I've been, I've been getting a lot of messages from uh, people thanking me for the videos on Facebook. They really made me happy. I like it. Thank you so much for those who thanked me. It really gave me a push, despite the pain. We'll do this. Okay. Uh, good luck with your exams. Stay cool. And good assurance.